Yeah, so this is about the relationship between these two problems, regular separability and intersection emptiness. Uh, this is work with Georg Zetscher at uh, Max Planck Institute for Software Systems. So let's look at intersection emptiness first. So you're given languages L1, L2 from some language class C and uh, you want to know whether they overlap or not. And uh, we are, in particular, we are interested in when this problem is decidable. Say, for instance, uh, this language class could be context-free languages. And uh, this is uh, something that's been of significance in uh, many areas, in, in particular uh, in uh, verification of uh, software and hardware. And uh, it relates to safety conditions in concurrent programs, which can be thought, thought of as uh, in particular, for instance, uh, intersection emptiness of context-free languages. So what about a certificate showing that, in fact, uh, these two things don't intersect? This leads to the idea of uh, separators and separability. And uh, we have the related problem of regular separability, where we ask for a separator S, which is regular, which contains all of L1, and it's disjoint from L2. And uh, if, it, if S is regular, then checking this is usually easy for a lot of different language classes. And uh, regular languages provide a good trade-off between separation, power, and desirability. We could consider separators from other language classes, but um, in this talk, we are going to talk about regular separability. So more generally, uh, we can have not one, but two different language classes in the sense that L1 can come from C1 and L2 can come from C2, similarly for regular separability. But in this talk, we will mostly focus uh, on the situation where C1 and C2 are the same language class. So our goal is to understand uh, whether there is some connection between the desirability of these two problems. So in general, we know, for instance, that for vis visibly pushed down languages, uh, you have undecidable regular separability, so result by recent result by Kobzinski, 18, and uh, decidable intersection emptiness, so older result by Alur Madhusudan. Um, but for instance, these languages are not closed under certain closure properties, um, and uh, there is coincidence of decidability in many cases. For instance, both of these problems are undecidable for context-free languages. And uh, they are both decidable for one counter nets. They are both undecidable for one counter automata. So the um, the citations in brackets are for uh, regular separability. Uh, intersection emptiness typically is something that's much older, whereas uh, regular separability has been of more interest recently. And for uh, uh, integer was, uh, we know that both are decidable. So one thing that was observed was that uh, all of these language classes where uh, there is this coincidence are full trios. In other words, they are closed under rational transductions. Um, so a rational transduction can be uh, defined as follows. So you have a, a machine, an, an asynchronous transducer, which can be thought of uh, as an automaton which produces output. So here, for instance, uh, you have some state P and then uh, the machine is making a transition to Q and it reads something. So here it reads nothing, it's epsilon and it outputs A. So you can also think of, uh, there's an abuse of notation, I'm just using the language of this uh, machine uh, uh, as T the, to denote uh, this language of this machine. It's some subset of uh, sigma star cross gamma star where sigma is the input alphabet and gamma is the output alphabet. But uh, here we are more interested in, in the notion where it's an input-output machine. So uh, we can generalize this notion in this sense. Uh, given some language L, which is some subset of sigma star, you can uh, look at the transduction T applied to L and collect all the words V such that there is some U in L such that UV belongs to T. So this is the notion of a transduction applied to some language. You get some other language. And closure under transduction means that when you apply different kinds of transducers to different languages uh, in the language class, you still get languages in the same language class. So language classes which are defined by finite state control with data structure, so a lot of uh, many different things like some kind of finite state control with say a queue or a stack, um, these, are, these are all easily seen to be full trios and therefore this is a, a natural and mild assumption on language classes. So 
we are we want to know whether in this uh, particular case for full trios is it the case that these two problems are the same having seen that uh, they do coincide in many different cases and we show that in fact these problems are independent so in the sense that there isn't a reduction either way um, and uh, we exhibit full trios c and d which are closed under rational transductions such that uh, the intersection problem is decidable uh, but the regular separability problem is undecidable and vice versa. So these counter examples are defined using special kinds of counter machines which we will come to in a bit and uh, the focus is on undecidable regular separability and decidable intersection emptiness in this talk. So let me just go through some key ideas used in the proof. Um, so for any injective function f which maps some uh, space sigma star to gamma star, you uh, let us look at uh, uh, two sets A and B which are in the domain, then uh, they do not intersect if and only if their corresponding images f of A and f of B do not intersect. Whereas uh, this kind of behavior where uh, intersection is, is preserved under these kinds of transformations, injective maps, this is not uh, um, maintained for regular separability. So this is the idea that we use. So in particular, uh, here is a key lemma we will be using. So for any two subsets S0, S1 of, sorry, there should be natural numbers here. If S1 contains all non-powers of 2, so it, it contains, uh, yeah, it contains all non-powers of 2, then the unary language A to the S0, so uh, A to the N is in this language if N is in S0, uh, is regularly separable from A to the S1 if and only if S0 is finite and disjoint from S1. So this is, uh, uh, so this is not difficult to see um, in the sense that if you take any unary language, uh, any unary regular language, then um, it, it has, it is ultimately periodic. So it, it has uh, some period P and we are including these uh, increasingly long lengths of uh, numbers or words, unary words in S1. So uh, any infinite regular language must intersect S1. So this means that any regular separator uh, cannot be infinite, it has to be finite, which implies that uh, S0 must be finite. So, and uh, in particular, the distortion, uh, this F that we use is, is some kind of binary to unary conversion via, via what we call incrementing automata, and uh, then we apply this uh, unary separability lemma. So, starting with a new, with the language class which has uh, undecidable infinity, which means the infinity problem is given some language from some language class. Uh, decide if this language is finite or not. Uh, so this, uh, the undecidability of the infinity of the original language, when you apply this distortion, uh, it, it results in the undecidable regular separability of the resulting language class. So we will see how we do this. So what are incrementing automata over a predicate class? So we start with some P, which is uh, uh, a class of numerical predicates. So each P belonging to Cal P is a subset of N. And uh, we have an incrementing automaton over Cal P, which is essentially a finite state automaton, uh, which has the usual finite set of, set of states and input alphabet. Um, the edge relation is slightly modified in the sense that uh, in addition to reading an input letter um, from sigma union epsilon, you could also either increment, there is a single counter which you either choose to increment or you do not do anything. So you are not allowed to decrement this counter and uh, Q0 is, is some initial state and for the final, for the acceptance, we have some final states, but now we also have some predicates P which belonging, which are uh, from the Cal P class so that at the end, the counter value must belong to uh, this particular P. So you have these pairs Q comma P such that uh, after reading the word W, you end up in state Q and the counter value some number N which belongs to P and you have some finitely many such pairs. So this is how you accept a word in this automaton model. And uh, so we denote by uh, IP the class of languages accepted by these incrementing automata over P. How is the counter? The counter is updated via this, uh, on the edges you can always increase by one or keep it uh, zero. So IP is always closed under rational transductions. And uh, it follows from the from the following lemma, which says that uh, any language, such language, is a finite union of languages of the form uh, T A to the P, where P is some predicate from your uh, predicate class, 
and t is some rational transduction and uh, it sort of easily follows from the way it's constructed you can see for every uh, pair q comma p of um, accepting the final pair you have one such t a to the p and it's just a finite union of these kinds of things and uh, so we just note that uh, this p is some arbitrary thing and this closure and rational transactions is just coming from the fact that this model is some kind of uh, finite state uh, machine augmented by some data structure. So, uh, we hope that it would be of independent interest in other constructions. So, in particular we consider incrementing automata over pseudo R predicates. So, let me describe what these are. So, we start with some number w and uh, we look at w as the binary representation of the some number um, and that is the number which is denoted nu of w. So, for instance, nu of 110 is 6 and for any language class we define uh, pseudo c to be uh, all the predicates such that p is all of these uh, binary values, all these numbers that you get when you look at the strings in L as uh, in binary. So, in particular we consider pseudo R where R is the set of coverability languages of reset vector addition systems with states. So, uh, I will not go into the definition of what this particular model of computation is. So, what we really require are some properties of R for our proof to go through. So, R in particular is a full trio and is closed under intersection. So, these things can be shown using standard product constructions and it has decidable emptiness because it is a well structured transition system and we are looking at coverability languages and it has undecidable infinity. And uh, this is uh, an old result by uh, Dufort, Finkel, Schnobelin from 98. So, our first theorem is that a regular separability in this particular language class which is incrementing automata over pseudo R predicates is undecidable. And uh, recall that this was a reduction from the infinity problem for R to the regular separability problem for this thing. So, starting with some input L belonging to R, we uh, look at the language K which is basically 1 0 to the length of w for all words w which uh, belong in uh, R and uh, this can be effectively constructed because R is effectively closed under rational transductions and uh, we note that k is infinite if L is infinite. So, uh, in particular because the shape of strings uh, is 1 0 to the mod w these are all if, if you further look at new of uh, such strings then these are all things which are powers of 2 because it just starts with a 1 and it has a bunch of zeros. And uh, k1 is, is this unary language which is a to the new of k and uh, clearly this belongs to uh, i pseudo of r and we define k2 to be all the non powers of 2 which you can further see as uh, the binary encodings of strings which have two ones in it, right. So, this 1, 0, 1 star, 1 and then 0, 1 star. And uh, in particular, because uh, this is a regular expression, so this is a regular language 1, 0, 1 star, 1, 0, 1 star. So, it is also uh, a reset was language and uh, we are taking uh, the binary encodings of these things. So, uh, you see that this is again uh, something which belongs to uh, incrementing automata over pseudo R. And now we apply the unary separability lemma. So, we have uh, k2 which contains all uh, non powers of 2 and uh, by construction k1 and k2 are disjoint because k1 just includes certain powers of 2. So, uh, the only way that k1 and k2 are uh, regularly separable is if uh, k1 is finite and uh, thus we have reduced it uh, I mean reduced from the problem of infinity for R. So, therefore, uh, this problem is also undecidable. So, secondly we have uh, decidable intersection emptiness and the proof strategy is to reduce to the truth problem of the following logic. Um, we uh, let us look at the positive existential fragment of uh, Pressburger arithmetic extended by pseudo R relations. So, these are relations uh, which are so um, so pseudo so R uh, so unary relations are the ones that we considered in the automaton model, but here we actually have 
Uh, you could have binary relations which you think of in the way, uh, hopefully if you have seen uh, automatic structures, um, you can think of it that way uh, as uh, encoded into a, a single, uh, an arbitrary arity relation can be encoded uh, in a way which can be recognized by a, a machine. And uh, the, the proof of uh, this lemma which shows that the truth problem is decidable is, is essentially uh, an induction on the formula on the formula structure where we show that uh, every relation which is definable in this particular logic can be recognized by a reset VAS and it is very similar to an automatic structures proof if you have seen this. So let us see uh, how we reduce this uh, problem of intersection emptiness of incrementing uh, automata over pseudo R languages to this particular logic. So firstly recall that uh, for any L1, L2, these are finite unions of languages of the form some rational transduction applied to A to the P where P belongs to pseudo R. So in particular, we can consider just a single T A to the P. So we are looking at T1 A to the S1 intersection T2 A to the S2 uh, checking whether this is non-empty. And further you can uh, apply the inverse transduction of T2 to conclude that it is sufficient to look at T uh, A to the S1 intersection A to the S2. So this, this particular transformation is important because now this allows us to think of T as just a transduction on unary alphabets. So it is a subset of A star cross A star whereas previously uh, it, it could have been something else. So in particular now when we look at X, Y which belongs to N cross N such that A to the X and A to the Y belong to T, uh, then this is semilinear by Parikh's theorem which says that uh, any uh, the Parik image of any uh, regular language is semilinear. In other words, it's, it's, uh, there is a formula in Pressburger arithmetic which is just uh, n plus in existential Pressburger arithmetic which defines this relation T with two free variables and further once you have, we have already assumed in the base logic that we have these pseudo relations, pseudo R relations S1 and S2. So we can write uh, a formula for T uh, A to the S1 as well as uh, A to the S2 such that the solution set is precisely what is required. And uh, now we can write the fact that the intersection of these two languages is non-empty simply by saying there is some common point X which belongs to both of these. So the uh, second counter example is, is uh, in the other direction namely to do with decidable regular separability and uh, undecidable intersection emptiness. So this uses higher order pushdown languages which, uh, which are things defined for instance if you look at order 2 pushdown languages these are defined by using stacks of stacks and uh, they have four different operations where you have uh, the normal push and pop operations uh, on a pushdown automaton but also an order 2 operation where you can copy the topmost stack uh, which is basically a second order push operation or pop off the topmost stack which is a second order pop operation. And now uh, you can consider order 3, order 4 and uh, the union of this entire chain for, uh, for all k's is what we call higher order pushdown languages. And uh, so one of the languages is higher order pushdown languages but the other language is uh, again something constructed using in incrementing automata which is slightly different uh, which we call power power h and not pseudo h there are some details. Uh, so uh, what is important is to see that this is an asymmetric counter example. So we have h versus power h unlike the previous counter example where we had um, i pseudo r in both places. So it is not as nice of a counter example but nevertheless for, for uh, these two classes uh, we have decidable regular separability but undecidable intersection emptiness. And uh, to conclude, uh, we have shown that regular separability and intersection emptiness are uh, independent problems and we have shown counter example in both directions. So uh, importantly the undecidability proof of regular separability for, uh, sorry this should be pseudo r, ink of pseudo r is different from the previous proof. So because uh, a lot of the previous proofs which showed that uh, regular separability is undecidable usually take the undecidability of intersection emptiness and then modify that 
to show that uh, you also have undecidability of regular separability. But since here we are building a counter example where we need decidable intersection emptiness but undecidable regular separability, uh, we need to use new techniques. So uh, one could say this is one of the key technical contributions of this paper to show that you can take the infinity problem for a class and then somehow uh, make a, a new class where the regular separability reflects the undecidability of the infinity problem. And uh, of course, we would like to see if there is a symmetric counterexample for undecidable intersection emptiness and decidable regular separability. There are lots of open problems which remain in uh, regular separability, which uh, has been an active area of research over the last 5 to 10 years. Uh, an important one being that for vector addition systems with states. Many uh, I, I, in the literature survey, I think I showed that we saw that many of the subcases have been solved for VAS, but the, the most general case remains open. Yeah, so thank you for listening. Um, questions? So, regular separability for multi state pushdown order, like other users? I mean, you mentioned about higher order pushdown order, right? Yeah. So multi state, sorry, I don't multi -state. know. Multi stack? Multi stack meaning you mean like two stacks? Yeah. No, but that's already Turing complete, right? If you have two stacks for a, a pushdown automaton, so there is no hope of getting uh, desirability results for things like that. So your results are uh, interesting but quite negative. Okay. So, uh, do you look for a class, another class and trio, full trio, for which you will have the equivalence between separability and intersectionalityness? So, um, I think the closure condition of uh, rational transactions is sort of natural. So, one of the other suggestions that I have heard is that, so, oh, maybe this infinity is the problem. So, what if you try to include that in the characterization? So, along with intersection, some kind of finiteness property, if you throw in, maybe that captures uh, regular separability. So, I think that is an interesting direction to consider to see if for full trios you can get. Uh, an alternate characterization, but which uh, adds to the intersection problem in some way. Uh, but this we have not thought about. Uh, so another possibility could be to restrict the power of regular language <laughs> in considering a subclass of regular language. Yeah. So yeah. So for I guess so for that we already have a nice combinatorial characterization, which is sort of. Uh, why uh, this question came about, I didn't mention it here, but we have, for instance, for piecewise testable separability, uh, we have this thing called the simultaneous unboundedness problem, uh, which is equivalent uh, in decidability to piecewise testable separability, um, and, and it's an entirely combinatorial question, um, which so which is a, I would say a very nice characterization. So, okay, other question. Okay, so thank you again.